So now we are finally back into the last part of the feature extraction, feature engineering problem, which is how do you encode categorical variables. Now, if you remember, in case of linear regression, the data that we already had dealt with, that was something which had continuous features always, right? So we did not actually have the problem of dealing with categorical variables. It was either, even if it was categorical variables, they were already present in the form of zero and ones, right? So now we are going to deal with categorical variables which are encoded as a string, right? Say color of the house. It's a blue, green, red. Or education, which is primary, secondary, university. So now the, your data would look something like this, right? So given that is, a, that is a constraint, you cannot directly use them as it is for a machine learning model because what your machine learning, at least scikit implementation does is takes your data frame, converts into a NumPy array. But NumPy array is basically everything that consists of numbers, right? So if you have a string variable, you cannot directly use it as it is. You have to somehow change that string variable into a numeric variable, right? However, way you, it could be discrete. It could still be a categorical numerical variable, but you still have to be numeric, right? You cannot directly pass string variables as it is from your features, right? So that is what is called a, so that, that's why we exactly need an encoding of categorical variables, right? So, now let's label encode this particular feature called MS zoning. That is something that we have seen that contains string values called RF and RL. And we cannot, as I've already explained, NumPy. So when you're trying to do linear regression, your data frame is first converted into a NumPy matrix, right? You already probably have figured that. If you not, try and go that. So your data, your data frame is converted into a NumPy matrix. But when you're trying to convert into a NumPy matrix, it would be an error because you have got your features which has got string variables like RF and RL in the column and you cannot directly convert that into a number, right? So we have to somehow figure out a way such that it can take string variables and convert them into a number, right? So that is the whole concept of encoding. So now, one obviously one option out here which is mentioned in the slides is to leave these variables out of algorithm, right? Which is basically you think that, okay, MS zoning is something that is causing me a lot of problem because I have to encode the string variable into numeric. You know what? Get rid of it. The most easiest and definitely the most laziest thing you could do. Because clearly, if you're losing out on, if you're going to do this, you're very soon going to lose out again half of your data. You remember the point where we tried replacing, dropping out points which were missing values. And we clearly saw that, you know, you, when you start dropping out things, you lose out on data and data is something you cannot, cannot lose out on. So please, let's not try and go that way. Let's not even try and do this thing that is mentioned in the slides. So let's try about thinking out some more intuitive way in which you can encode your categorical data because categorical data is consisting of strings and you want to somehow encode them into numbers. The first idea is basically called label encoding. Label encoding is nothing but, you know, you have your data. So let's take an example of understanding label encoding. So this is your data looks like, so say color of house. So it's blue, green and red. And you assign blue a color of zero, green a color of one and red a color of two. Sorry, you assign this number, this, this color you assign number zero, this color you assign number one and this color red you assign number two. So all your strings, so now when you have your color, so this is how your data looks like, right? Say R, B, G, G, R. So this is your data. So you have number of houses, which are string variables. So using label encoding, now they would be represented, the same data would be now be represented as red is two. This was B, so B is zero. Green is one, one, two. Right. So this is fairly easy to understand. Right. So you have your data and for each of the string variable, each of the string possible values in the data in that particular feature, you have assigned a numeric value to that. So now let's try and apply label encoding on all of the categorical features in our data set. Right. So let's see. Cut. Now let's try and apply label encoding on the feature MS zoning and see how it looks like. Right. So MS zoning, if you remember, had particular values which were RL and RM and all of those values, right? But now once you apply label encoder, right? So how you apply label encoder is this. You see label encoder, then you initialize that class and then you say dot fit transform. And you can clearly see here that all the values which were string variables earlier have now been con con converted into numbers, right? So these are all numeric variables. 
So you have seen, but the first ID, the first house has been attributed a category numeric value of three. The next one has again been three, right? So you understand what has happened here, right? So for each of the possible values which were there in, uh, which are there in the MS zoning feature, right? So MS zoning feature had multiple string values. Now for each of the string value, you have assigned the numeric label to it, right? So now, obviously, as you guys evident, the MS zoning column only contains numbers rather than string, right? So that seems like a good idea, right? Why that seems like a good idea? If you have string variables, you know what? Just take zero and give it a number, right? Green, take it a number, right? This sounds a really good idea, right? But what is what is something that is missing with this idea? The thing that is missing with this idea is that by assigning a label like this, you have basically assumed that color red is greater than color green and which is greater than color blue. But really is this even true? There's nothing which says that color red should be better than color green which is better than color blue, right? So why did we even do something like this, right? So to do understand when to apply label encoding and when to not, right? Clearly this was the case when we tried applying label encoding for color of the houses. That was not a good idea because we ended up ordering the colors which made no sense. House colors don't have an order in them, right? So that's something wrong. So let's try and understand what are those cases when you want to apply label encoding and what when are the cases you don't want to apply label encoding. So first up to understand that, let's understand the concept of nominal and ordinal variables. So what are nominal variables? Nominal variables are those ones. Like in this particular example, you see there are three particular variables, right? Color, which is blue, green, red, yellow. Educational qualification, which is primary school, secondary school, graduate, postgraduate. And then there's a salary bracket. Now, all, although all three of them categorical, these are all three of them are categorical variables, right? These are all string type variables. Even 0 to 50,000 is a string variable, right? Because that's a range, right? So all of these are categorical variables. So out of them, all of them can actually be ideally be encoded by label encoder. But then we saw that a label encoding your colors was not a good idea, right? We saw that why? Because we ended up saying that green is better than red and red is better than blue or something like that, which is not the most ideal way you would want to do it, right? Because colors don't have an order in them. So the thing that differs between across all of these three variables is can you order them? In case of colors, there's really not much of an order. You cannot say blue is better than green, green is better than red. Obviously, you can have your personal choices. But in case of a data science problem, there's nothing that you can say that, okay, you know what, red is my favorite color. It's greater than green and which is better than you. There's nothing which says that, right? So you cannot in real life order colors, right? But you can order educational qualification, right? You know that primary school is something which is lesser than secondary school, which is lesser than graduate school and which is lesser than postgraduate. So those variables which you can order are called ordinary variables, right? Ordinal variables are all those variables which can be ordered, right? Even though are categorical variables, there's an order in them. And this is clearly what I've explained to you already. The other one which are called interval variables are the variables which are basically, as the name already suggests, are ones which come in, in, in the form of intervals, right? So 10 to 50,000 and 1 to 1 lakh. So that, so there's, a, there's an order among them, right? So in this case, you can also see your salary bracket, the numbers are again something that you can order. You know that 0 to 50,000 is lower bracket salary as compared to 50,000, 1 to 1 lakh, right? Which is again a lower bracket salary as compared to 1 lakh and 1.5 lakh. So these are some things that are ordered, right? Orderable. So you know that there's an inherent order among them, which is not the case with color. You cannot order color, right? For same, in the same way, probably you cannot probably order, I don't know, food tests, right? So you can say the food is hot, spicy, uh, sweet, and there are different tastes for the food, right? But you cannot order them because there's no inherent thing that says that sweet is better than sour and sour is better than chili. So there are certain categorical variables which cannot be ordered versus some categorical variables like education, salary bracket, home address. Those are some of the things which can be ordered. There's an inherent meaning in that order. So now that we have discussed that, now you can clearly understand this that if you have a variable which can be ordered, you might as well use label encoding because label encoding 
gives you an ordering among your variables, right? It assigns a numeric value two, it assigns a numeric value three, and assigns a numeric value four to different categorical features, right? Different string features in your categorical variable. And if that categorical variable can be ordered, then those numeric value assigning makes sense, right? In case of ordinal and interval variables, it makes sense for you to assign a numeric label such that your secondary education, sorry, your primary education has the least numeric label, which is say zero. Your secondary education has a slightly higher label, which is say one. Your bachelor's degree has a slightly higher label, which is say two. And your secondary or final postdoc or PhD has a slightly higher uh, education level, which says three. Right, so you can, there's an ordering among them and when you assign a label to each of them, it kind of makes sense, right? But coloring, you're applying labels to that, doesn't make sense, right? Because you're saying red is better than green, which is better than yellow. There's nothing which says that. So what do you do with categorical variables which are not orderable, which is basically nominal variables? So in case of ordinal or interval variables, you can apply label encoding. What do you do with those categorical variables which are nominal variables which where you cannot order them really right so you cannot make them like one two three or zero something like that right so those are the cases where you apply something called one hot encoding now let's get an intuition of what is a one hot encoding so now you can see in the slides so one hot encoding is nothing but basically converting your features into a series of one and zeros such that your blue color so in this case there are three possible four possible colors right red sorry three possible colors, blue, red, yellow, and that's it, right? So what you do is for blue, you make it into a one hot encoded vector such that your blue is one and the rest of the colors are zero. In case it's red, you see the variable corresponding to X equals to red is one and the rest of the variables are zero, right? And in case your color is yellow, you can see the third column, which is color equals to yellow as one and the rest of the colors are zero. So this is an easy way to represent your nominal variables, nominal categorical variables. So you had string variables out here and you have converted them into numeric variables. So what now you have done is you have a string variable which was earlier blue and now you have converted that same feature blue into a three dimensional vector which is one zero zero where one is basically indicating that the color is blue and zero for that red is zero and yellow is zero. Similarly, the second case you have converted into a vector which is 0, 1, 0. This is the whole concept of one hot encoding where you take a string feature and you convert into one hot encoded feature which is a set of 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, or 0, 0, 1 in case you have three possible combinations, right? So in case you had four, co four possible colors in this variable X, you would have four variables out here, right? So, instead, so if you have say, for example, another color which was green, now for green, you would have another column here, which is X green. And whenever the color is green, you would have a vector, which is zero, zero, zero and one, right? Clear, easy to understand. Let's draw this for you. And so clearly this was not the best way to do it, right? So what do you do here is in case you have colors R, G, B here, right? So there are three possible colors. So in case it's R, you would probably put a one zero zero. In case it's a blue, you would put zero one zero. In case it's a green, zero zero one. And again, green zero zero one. And again, red, which is one zero zero. Right. So for each color, you have a, you represent it by a instead of a single one number, we represent it by a vector. Now there's no meaning to the ordering of this vector, right? Which is basically what makes it inherent for it to be used as a encoding idea, encoding solution for nominal variables. So now let's look at to how exactly your one hot encoded vector looks like for a real life example. So in this particular example, you can see that garage type is something that we have one hot encoded, right? So the garage types could have been built in carport detached. There were three possible types, right? Similarly for mass VNR type, that could be brick face, that could be none, that could be stone and so on and so forth, right? So you can clearly see that if your mass VNR face type, they're depending on whatever type you have. In this case, probably this example, this particular house, the one that is highlighted here, probably has a mass VNR type, which is brick face. In this case, you can see it has a mass VNR type none, right? So these are all, ideally they were, if you look back into the data, you can see that these were all 
categorical features which were string features in original and they were nominal features right which there's nothing which says brick face is better than none which is better than stone right so these are all different type of mass vnr types right so given that there's no ordinal same you can hold in for here garage type right so garage type built in garage type carport garage type detached there's nothing which says detached is better than carport which is better than built in right so depending on what variable you're using if it's an ordinal variable you can either directly label and code them if it's a non-ordinal variable which is say a nominal variable then you cannot label and code them right so in this case you convert them into 0 1 0 kind of one hot encoded vectors right so now there's one slight problem which is basically the problem of curse of dimensionality as you can clearly see if you have five or six different possible values in your categorical features you end up with six columns right in your new data features so that is a curse of dimensionality which is basically to say your number of dimensions increase rapidly as you kind of uh, encode category encode all your categorical nominal features right so which is not a good idea so that's where the concept of hashing comes into place the concept of hashing is nothing but in case you have a lot of categories so you're basically categorical string data which is ordinal comes in lot of varieties that is basically there are lot of possible values which that particular variable takes up then it's a good idea probably to instead of one hot encode all of them what you do is merge some of them together and then use those merge quantities now let's talk of a discrete example so that we understand this much better uh, so let's say we are one of the column in your problem data set is pin codes right so there are 182 pin codes in mumbai now if you use one hot encoding you would end up with for one particular feature which was called pin code you would end up with 182 features right so that's an exponentially high it's not even it's so that's an exponentially high increase in the number of features right so you don't want to do that you don't want to kind of explode your number of features so just by using one hot encoding so what is a good idea to deal with in here right so you want to you know that probably some locations are very adjacent to each other right so what is a good idea is probably probably merge locations which are very near to each other right so the other which is in the very near to lower parallel which is very near to volley so you can probably combine some locations which are you know by hand are very because of your intuition you already know that some of these places are very near to each other so let's club them into say north mumbai or you know something like western suburbs so instead of using all of those pin codes individually as a feature just merge them into one buckets and use those buckets now to label and code right so that way you would have a lot less number of features so one good way to kind of hash is you know you might not always have business you know you know like in the case of pin codes you already knew that the other was something which is close to uh, lower parallel which is close to say cyan or something but this is not something you would always know beforehand right in case of pin codes you knew that because you are staying in mumbai so what is an, another good idea if you don't know what is the way to merge them is basically based on frequency so out of your all possible options so there are multiple varieties of your data right your feature column has multiple varieties that it comes in based on number of times that occurs you can merge them right so the ones that are the most high frequency ones you can club them together into the high frequency bucket the ones which are mid frequency club them into the mid frequency bucket and the ones which are very sparsely occurring very low you can probably club them into one back bracket so this is what which is exactly written here so to combine levels using frequency we first look at the frequency distribution of the each level right basically each of the possible so green red blue these are the different levels of the same data right so these are the different possible options for the same data which is color so color comes in different levels and then you can basically see that okay i think red and green are not something which are very widely used right no one probably wants to color their house red and green which are very low frequency instead of using red and green separately you can just merge them together and use that as one particular bucket and your rest of the colors as different color buckets right or you can probably say that okay i think lot of people are using green and blue and right? let's club the green and blue as one particular color bracket and rest of the colors are separate so this is something you decide based on frequencies so this is one case where you are not aware of your business rules right business rules was case of pin codes right? you knew where which pin code is near to which other you could easily merge them in case you don't know right so then it's a good idea to probably merge based on 
you know some other heuristics like frequency so the ones which are basically very low in frequency which occur less than 5% of the time you club them into one particular bracket which is a low frequency bucket right so that's it so in case of ms zoning let's check that with this particular thing with an example in case of ms zoning we see that this particular values right which particular features which is fv and rh are occurring the least number of time and this particular another feature which is a c right so you can clearly see these three features are the ones which are occurring the least number of time so probably you could combine them using one particular combine them into one particular bracket right so that's what exactly is written out here so we are gonna so we see that the last three possible options for ms zoning were the ones which were at the least frequency right so instead of using them as separate uh, features for a one hot encoding we can combine them into one particular bracket and then use the pos now that this would be three possible buckets right the first one is rl the second one is rm and the third one is a combined bucket of all three of them so we can use those three to now one hot encode my features right so that's all about it so that's all about feature extraction that we have learned so let's kind of go through what we have learned so there was data cleaning and pre-processing where we talked about handling outliers. So what were the techniques when we talked about handling outliers? The one most basic thing that we discussed was basically removing outliers, which is, well, let's say a bit primitive. We are going to understand more advanced topics as we go on further during the lesson. Some of them are using unsupervised techniques like clustering and those are multivariate methods, right? So then we talked about handling missing values where we kind of talked about multiple ways. Uh, the most primitive being dropping the column, dropping the row, the most slightly more advanced were replacing them with value zero. A slightly more advanced them version was basically replacing instead of replacing with zero, replacing them with mean or median directly as it is. And then there were slightly more advanced techniques which we are going to cover as we go through the rest of the lecture series. The third part is handling skewness. So what is exactly handling skewness about? Skewness is basically when your distribution is slightly tilted towards left or slightly slightly tilted towards left. Or slightly tilted towards right right so now the third thing we did was basically handling skewness where skewness was basically something where your distribution is not exactly normal but sometimes tilted towards your left sometimes tilted towards your right so in those kind of cases how did you handle skewness right so what was we, what was the most important two things that we did here we did log transformation and we did square root transformation and that's how we kind of took care of the skewness the next part was about feature extraction. Feature extraction is basically where we talked about how you can do scaling and how you can do standardizations to kind of bring down your features into one particular range. And then we finally talked about feature engineering where we talked about applying your domain expertise. That is the most important thing uh, that you can probably do in your entire data science career. That's what makes you as a data scientist unique from the rest of the crowd. So data applying domain expertise creatively and intuitively is something that is the main thing behind feature engineering. So in feature engineering, apart from domain expertise, we talked about combining features. And then finally, we talked about encoding. Encoding was where we had a categorical variable, which was string variable. And somehow we needed to convert into a numeric variable. How do we do that? If the variable is ordinal or interval, we can use label encoder if the variable is non-ordinal which is nominal variable then we can directly use one hot encoding in case of one hot encoding there could be cases like pin codes where it could get really high dimensional in case to counter that we use techniques called hashing that's all about feature engineering and feature extraction that we have for today see you in the next class log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates